யானம் உரே யாவரும் கேடீர் செம்மொழி வலையொலி யூடியூப் சேனல் இந்த சேனலின் மூலமாக இந்த வலையொலியின் மூலமாக பல்வேறு தகவல்களை தினந்தோறும் நாங்கள் வழங்கி கொண்டிருக்கக்கூடிய அந்த நிலையில் முழுமையாக கண்டு பார்க்கலாம் The title of this paper is Perasiriyar, Commentator as Theorist. In the world of Tamil literary history, there have been a few scholars known as Perasiriyar, which literally means great teacher. And the one that wrote a commentary on Puruladiharam of Tolhapiyam is the most distinguished of them. He is different from and not to be mistaken for Aathirayan Perasiriyar who wrote what is known as Pudu Pairam to Tulhapiyam and he shouldn't be mistaken for the one that interpreted Thirukkovayar and Mayacharar to whom a work on prosody is attributed to Yaparangala Virithi. We are not certain about the identity of two more. One who is supposed to have written the lost commentary on Kurundohai and the other who is called Perasiriyar Neminadar. Unfortunately, the real name of the celebrated commentator on Maipati Yal, Uamai Yal, Seyuli Yal, and Marabhiyal of Puraladhyaram is not known. It is generally believed that Perashriyar would have lived during a period not earlier than the 12th century and later than the authors of Nannul, Thandi Alangaram and Yapparangalam, some of whose contentions he refutes. That Nachinarkinir was a great admirer of Perasiriyar is evident from the former's commentary on Seyuliyal where he scrupulously follows in the footsteps of his predecessor and even repeats some of Perasiriyar's statements verbatim. Though Puraladiharam has 665 Nurpas in 9 Eels, we have been able to get Perasiriyar's commentary on only 417 Nurpas found in four Yals. He must have written on the rest of the third part of Tolhapiyam also because on four or five occasions he refers back to his comments on the Nurpas of Agathina Yal and Kalaviyal. He is extremely concerned with the integrity of the text of Puruladiharam and accounts for the arrangement of its eels in a particular order. Those that place the Marabiyal before the Seyuliyal interchanging their positions in the original text are rightly taken to task by him. During his days, Adhikaram was called Othu or Padalam. He at times speaks of Yeluthu Othu and Sol Othu. He is always found to be well informed about the theoretical issue he is discussing and can make authoritative observations on the earlier interpretations. His contentions are convincing whenever he recommends or rejects the views of formidable commentators such as Amida Sagarar, Ilamburanar, Kamiya Nanniyar, Kakai Padiniyar, Sangha Yapudayar, Sirhaki Padiniyar, Thandiyar, Nathatanar, Palghapiyanar, Palkhayanar, and Mahachurar. Without mentioning their names, 
he would examine objectively and rationally all the aspects of the particular problem. It is always in a firm and authoritative manner that he refutes others' arguments. They do not know that this was not the author's intention when he composed the Noorpa. Those who have said like that do not know what poetry is. What strikes us most about his commentary is his immense erudition. The passages that he cites are from varied sources ranging from Yetu Tohai, Patu Patu, Padinan Kanaki to Selapadiharam, Mani Mehalai and Mutavlairam. From his commentary, we have come to know of the existence of works like Ammani Patu, Idai Kadanar, Uusi Muri, Seyitriyam, Nakiran Angadam, Pavai Patu, Banji Patu, Velakkatanar Kutu, Perasiriya's understanding of the Tamil theory of poetry is praiseworthy. He has fully grasped Tolhapiya's concept of poetry and provides a lucid exposition of it with suitable illustrative examples. The eminent Tamil grammarian who has been internationally recognized as the linguist's ultimate guru is exquisitely presented and ably defended by the commentator. What Tolhapir explains and what Sangam poems exemplify is a classicist theory of poetry and Perasir swears by it. <coughs> the cardinal principle of modern western concept of poetry as advocated by leading poet critics like Ezra Pound and T.S. Eliot is that all revolutionary attempts at making poetry new must be based on a sound knowledge of tradition. Stressing the value of tradition, T.S. Eliot points out that a great poem always asserts its relation to the works of dead poets and artists and that the poet must develop a sense of the presentness of the past. Whereas here, rejects anything that violently deviates from the tradition said by Tulhapyam and Sangam poems. He says, refute it, saying that they are not the poems of Sonroor. Say that the one that came like that was the poem of a later age. Refute it, saying that differing from Tulhapyar is not tradition. It is useless to apply to the ancient poems, the grammatical rules that pertain to the works composed during the later ages. These are some of his observations on, on the importance of tradition. He rightly makes it clear that literature precedes grammar and that any grammatical rule that is extant would have been derived from creative writings that had come into being earlier. He says, we are not citing an example because there is no such poem of the ancient period. If there are any contemporary poems, you may refer to them. Since there is grammatical provision, it does not matter if there is no extant illustrative piece. Another observation, as there is a grammatical definition, when you come across an illustrative poem, you may have it. Such poems of the ancient period might have perished. Then one more. Of the 150 Kali poems, there is no Kali Venba, Venba, Kali Venbati of this Kaikilai type. We have therefore given no example. But as there is a grammatical rule, there would have been such poems. When you get them, you may peruse them. Perasiriya's discussion on the use of figures of speech in a poem is extremely illuminating. He says it is not proper to call them any because they do not always add to the beauty of a poem. They are often artificial 
and do not form an integral part of a poem. Tullapir does not include it, include any as one of the limbs of a poem, Urupu, which he conceives as an organic whole. If he has a chapter on Uamai simile, which is the basis of all figures of speech, it is because Uamai like Maipadu helps the poet across express his meaning clearly and not because it is essentially a source of beauty. Just as Satan is independent of the headgear and the garland that he wears, what is called Ani cannot form an ins inseparable part of a poem. Quoting a poem in which a king's soldiers are compared to dogs and his enemies to pigs, Perasiri says that the comparison is a degenerate and does not enhance the greatness of the poem. This is his observation. Matridu Uamayyal Yevvothinodu Yehudaitho Enin Mer Porul Purappadu Kuriya Meipati Yelodu Yehudaitho Ennai Uamandhanum Porul Purappadu Kuruhindran Adalin Enganamo Enin Aapolum Aama Enrakkal Aama Kandariyadhan Kandariyadhan Kattukkul Senra Vili Adhanai Kandal Aapolum Ennum Uamaye Patri Aama Iduvenru Ariyum Aakalan Enbadu Ini Yivvothinil Kuruhindra Uamangalil Selavatrayim Solladiharatullum Seyuliyal Ullum Solluhindra Sella Porulhalayim Vangikkundu மற்றவை செய்யுட்கண்ணே அணியாம் என இக்காலத்து ஆசிரியர் நூல் செய்தாரும் உளர் அவை உறுதலையாக செய்யுட்கு அணி என்று இலக்கணம் கூறப்படா என்னை வல்லார் செய்யின் அணியாகியும் அல்லார் செய்யின் அணி என்று ஆகியும் வரும் தாங்காட்டிய இலக்கணத்தில் சிதையா வழியும் என்பது இனி அவற்றை பொருள் உறுப்பு என்பது அல்லது அணி என்பது ஆயின் சாத்தானையும் சாத்தானால் அணியப்பட்ட முடியும் தொடையும் முதலாய முதலாயவற்றையும் வேறுகண்டார் போல அவ்வணியும் செய்யுளின் வேறாகல் வேண்டும் என்பது இட் இஸ் டு பி நோட்டட் தட் தெர் இஸ் அன் அவுட் ரைட் காண்டம்னேஷன் ஆஃப் ஆல் அட்டம்ஸ் அட் இன்ட்ரடியூசிங் ஆல் கைண்ட்ஸ் ஆஃப் ஸ்பீ ஃபிகர்ஸ் ஆஃப் ஸ்பீச் அண்ட் ஃபார் ஃபெச்சு டிவைசஸ் விச் ஆர் ஆஃப் சியூடோ இஸ்தட்டிக் வேல்யூ Perasirir has a perfect understanding of Tullyapir's conception of a poem and is totally opposed to any stupid innovations by upstarts that will mar its beauty. Defending the classical tradition, he censures the emphasis on a part in isolation from the whole and the use of unnatural conceits which may result in a pompous false sublimity. With regard to the use of diction, Perasirir is strikingly modern when he upholds the Sangam tradition that a poet is expected to employ words that are in current use and in the sense in which they are used. Antiquated words and outmoded expressions are to be avoided. He says, in a way, sollum porulum அவ்வக்காலத்தார் வழங்கு மாற்றானே செய்யுள் செய்து என்பதாயிற்று இதனது பயன் ஒரு காலத்து வழங்கப்பட்ட சொல் ஒரு காலத்து இள ஆதலும் பொருள் வேறுபடுதலும் உடைய அவை அதோழி இதோழி உதோழி எனவும் குயின் எனவும் இவை ஒரு காலத்து உளவாகி இக்காலத்து இள ஆயின அவை முற்காலத்து உள என்பதே கொண்டு வீழ்ந்த காலத்தும் செய்யுள் செய்யப்படா அவை ஆசிரியர் நூல் செய்த காலத்து உள ஆயினும் கடைச்சங்கத்தார் காலத்து வீழ்ந்தமையின் பாட்டிலும் தொகையிலும் அவற்றை நாட்டிக்கொண்டு செய்யுள் செய்திலர் அவற்றுக்கு இது மரபிலக்கணம் ஆகலின் என்பது இனி பாட்டினும் தொகையினும் உள்ள சொல்லே மீட்டொரு காலத்து உரித்தன்றி போயினவும் உள அவை முற்காலத்தே என்பதே கொண்டு பிற்காலத்து நாட்டி செய்யுள் செய்யப்பரா என்பது 
what is admirable here is the awareness that when words go out of use they are not fit for poetry because they lose their suggestive power words like adoli idoli udoli and queen once in vogue are now lost and perasrier concedes that certain words which were in use during tolhapier's time disappeared during the sangam period and that the same fate overtook some of the words found in the sangam poems he draws our attention to the fact that every age may have its dominant meters and genres also talai idai kadai changathaarum pira saandrorum naarchigiran varum aashiriyamum venbaavum kaliyume perumbaanmayum seidhar vanjippa siru varavitrana kolga saandror murkaalathu kattalai adiyal kattalai adiyal செய்யுள் செய்தனர் பிற்காலத்து அது மாறிற்று இந்நூல் செய்த காலத்து தலைச்சங்கத்தாரும் இடைச்சங்கத்தாரும் அவ்வாறு கட்டளை அடியால் பயின்று வரை செய்யுள் செய்தார் என்பது இச்சூத்திரங்களால் பெரிதும் பின்பு கடைச்சங்கத்தாருக்கு அஃது அரிதாகலின் சீர் வகை அடி பயிலச் செய்தார் என்று உணர்க புதிதாக தாம் வேண்டிய வாற்றால் பல் செய்யுளும் தொடர்ந்து வரச் செய்வது முத்தொள்ளாயிரமும் பொய்கையார் முதலியோர் செய்த அந்தாதி செய்யுளும் என உணர்க கலம்பகம் முதலாயினவும் சொல்லுப ஃப்ரம் த நூர்பாஸ் ஆஃப் தொல்காப்பியம் ஹி இன்ஃபர்ஸ் தட் பாயட்ஸ் ஆஃப் த ஃபர்ஸ்ட் டு டூ சங்கம்ஸ் வேர் இன்ட்ரெஸ்டட் இன் கட்டளை அடி வேர் அஸ் தோஸ் ஆஃப் த தேர்ட் சங்கம் ஸ்விட்ச் ஓவர் டு Seer Vahai Adi The poets of the first, middle and last Sangams and the poets who came later largely composed their poems in the four-footed Acheriyam, Venba and Kali. Know that Manjipa was only rarely used. In order to arrange the many stanzas in the order they desired, a new form called Andadi. the end as the beginning was used by the author of muttollairam and poigeyar they mention kalambagam and others too these are perasrier's observations 